very many things to do. Okay. Our next speaker is Benjamin Hatash, as I was saying, wanna be ad hoc structure and exploration of text collections using queries. Please. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, um, already told the title, so I don't have to. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here. Um, that was the wrong button, I guess. So yeah, probably uh, all of you know that uh, large amounts of information are only available as, as written text. Um, and usually they also don't contain just the information you're looking for, but a lot of other things. So if you need to, to get some certain information from that, you need to somehow process it by, by reading it or by, by doing some processing, automatic processing, um, which is, for example, relevant in, in a lot of uh, decision-making uh, scenarios. Um, take, for example, data journalists writing articles about airline uh, uh, security. Of course, then you can do, download uh, the reports about all uh, airline issues that ever happened provided by, by the government. And then you have to either read through all of them and look like, okay, which are, for example, the airlines involved um, and write it down. Or you need to have some uh, certain knowledge about programming to to uh, yeah write a pipeline that automatically tries to extract the information uh, you need and of course after the digits for and read for hundreds and hundreds of pages since the information is usually not in the first sentence um, you find out you need another attribute so you have to start over here um, that doesn't sound that uh, useful so of course uh, we, we need some some kind of automatic mechanism for that and there are a lot of approaches um, but uh, one one way to think think of this problem is uh, to, to have like yeah we need need some kind of knowledge base about the content I have right now knowledge base that only contains the stuff I'm interested right now in and it even doesn't have to be completely accurate but I need just an approximation because um, yeah to know like which are the airlines most involved in accidents? I don't know to know the exact numbers. If I'm missing one accident, whatever, because there are hundreds. Um, yeah, and even better, this should be available without a need to to know about uh, how to program this, uh, how to to do this uh, automatically. Um, so, uh, therefore, we envision a system where you just write a query. You issue a SQL uh, query like you see, you see above, and um, the system automatically extracts the information from the text uh, that is uh, needed. So just supply some text where you know the information is in, but you don't give any further information at that point. Then you issue the query, and you can get, get the results. So get the numerical results, for example, either table or aggregation using average or sums or whatever. Uh, inside and this allows it even to to get information from it um, that is not explicitly stated in the information like i said if you have an average or you're know, interested in average values they are not in the original text but you have to compute it um, and once you have this uh, this uh, result you can uh, analyze for example which are the airlines most involved in accidents and then Based on your findings, issue uh, new queries and refine that. Um, that yeah. um, how can we uh, implement such a thing? So our proposed pattern for that is uh, can be seen here. So you load a document collection that is relevant for some certain information need, and issue a query. Then the system automatically determines which kind of information. Nuggets are needed to, to, to um, answer these query. It extracts the relevant information from the uh, system and builds an approximate knowledge base. Whereas in this me, uh, um, case, I mean with the knowledge base, really a table or multiple tables containing information to a certain information needs. So it's not about building general knowledge, uh, knowledge base like uh, the community already does a lot. Um, and uh, this can then be used to answer the query by, by uh, evaluating the, the SQL query on this uh, table. And um, 
based on that, the user can then issue new queries and uh, the knowledge base can uh, be refined to now contain the information that is needed to uh, answer this updated query. And of course, the existing information that was already extracted and organized to answer the previous queries, if it's relevant, can be reused. So, um, as you can probably imagine, the hard part of that is this extraction and organizing of information. Getting the, the, the query intent is also not, not trivial, but it's not that complex and evaluating. I mean, it's, it's basically in, in its simplest form, the thing that all database management systems do. They take a table, evaluate, see if the query on it, general result. Um, so the challenge is how can we uh, build and approximate a custom knowledge base automatically and really fast so the user don't have to wait a lot for that, but issue a query and have the result after seconds or maximum few minutes. So um, currently, especially for building uh, normal uh, knowledge bases, you have this part, you have the, the text information, then you either manually extract information or build a pipeline and store this information in a structured form in the hope that this knowledge base then contains everything you will need later on. Now, what we propose is that we simply greedily extract every information like that could somehow be relevant, for example, all named entities that are contained in the text, um, store them in a preprocessed form, and then based on the information need on the, on the query, we find out which of these are relevant, bring them to a more structured form, which is more costly, of course, than simply extracting them, and have them at hand to, to uh, pre process them. Um, the first stage, as I said, takes, for example, all named entities by using state of the art approach by uh, Stanford, Stanford from Stanford. Um, and it's independent of the information needs, so we can perform this uh, as soon as, as we have the data, as soon as you specify, okay, I want to work on this textual collection, we can start uh, processing them and store them away. And uh, we extract, uh, yeah. The, the, the natural language image itself, but also label, the context of the sentence, the position, and use all that and, and, and embed this to, to have a vectorized form that we can use to calculate distances. Um, and now we need to have the, the online part that comes when the user issues a query. That starts, of course, with the query where we have to, to extract the uh, necessary columns. In this simple case, it's just the names of, of, of the attributes here. So we need probably a date, an airline, and a city. Uh, Column. So let's say, okay, we just go with the, with the airline. Um, then we first ask the user to specify one, maybe two or three examples of, of airlines that they guess that are in this text collection, um, which are used then as starting points or starting vectors in this, this vector space. And then uh, we collect feedback. Um, this, this feedback collection is, uh, of course, interesting. So um, what we want, we want to have minimal uh, amount of feedback to, to get a lot of uh, maximum amount of information about the vector space and find out which is the subspace in this vector space that's probably relevant for this attribute contains the information that we need here. Um, unfortunately, that would, uh, I can't explain the full uh, step how we choose which uh, uh, nodes are, are chosen for feedback uh, here. There is a, we, we published a, a short paper on that at uh, AIDB this year. Um, you can find the link here to this paper if you're interested. It's also in this, uh, cited in this paper uh, published here. Um, and once we uh, collected this feedback, we can, uh, and so like if this is simple, yes, no, is this relevant for, for that attribute or is it not? So it's, it's really for user just clicking yes or no. Um, and once we collected this, we can identify a subspace uh, which is, contains probably the, the relevant attributes um, that can then uh, be used to initially uh, build a table. So we right now are doing a simplified uh, uh, assumption that uh, each document contains uh, is relevant for one entry of the table for one line. So we can for, for those entries we already had feedback to we can of course use them, but then we can uh, use the uh, the subspace to say that like, okay which are extractions from the document I'm not trying to, to, to fill 
to find the relevant information. So I found to find the airline that was uh, relevant for this uh, excellent report. And as you can see, in this case, it would be um, this note K here, which is inside the subspace, or maybe other one might be quite a bit close to this. So we don't need feedback on all um, entries, but just on few uh, relevant uh, vectors to find out which is the subspace. Uh, so that's the general idea behind the, the knowledge base uh, construction. Um, as I said, this then combines with the other components to this overall system that can be used to pre-run SQL queries on uh, text without uh, training. So of course we have uh, this feedback phase, but we don't have training, especially not training on every text collector or whatever, but it's independent um, on without uh, rule specification. It can use uh, all kinds of uh, information nuggets that are produced by any existing process that are able to identify a natural language mention of the text and in the best case uh, give a label to that but even that could be optional um, and then the knowledge base is uh, constructed from that uh, with this offline extraction and then the online matching phase with the short interaction phase which in our first uh, experiments shows that this massively improves the um, quality of the matching and uh, as already mentioned, the prototype uh, we, we, we already published about this, this, this uh, core part uh, thing, which is already available. Also, the code in the data set um, in the paper I linked or uh, in the paper I published here. And of course, uh, uh, if you do not have any questions, I'm very looking forward to this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions? Answers? Those days so that we can see also the people in the room slowly. But... Okay, questions for now. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, one question there. Yes. Huh. I mean, why is that can you explain more on the uh, online matching? That seems to be a little bit complicated if you want to bootstrap a knowledge graph or base early on. Because you know you, you create offline, you have a copy of that, but then the online for me that will take longer. So how, what's your trade-off between like bootstrapping something really quick versus the online matching? So so the, the, the matching relies on, on, on the user feedback to, to identify vectors relevant for, for the, the attributes. Because of course, if I have an attribute title like named airline, and I have a name entry extraction with org label or whatever, that's that really hard match. And, and, and it's, it's really difficult to do so. So we need this feedback. And of course, we can't uh, collect this feedback to all possible attributes. So that's why it's not feasible to, to, to do this before. Um, but yeah, as I said, this, this, this feedback phase is it's really, you, you get presented a, a short snippet of, of half a sentence with the marked, uh, this is this attribute, this is relevant, this is airline or not airline. And you do this for 10, 10 rounds maybe. So you would say 10 times yes or no. And afterwards we, we identify the subspace. So that's timely, it's, it's quite okay. And you don't need to prepare this in advance. But what takes time, of course, is, is running the extractors and getting all of those uh, uh, general information nuggets and embedding them. And that can be done offline so that the system is, when the user issues the query, that is quite fast. Is there a way for you to try to minimize the human effort? I'm just thinking of the bootstrap that we use. If you don't have the user, then you don't have a notice graph. Right? That's, that's the part that I'm missing. So yeah, we we we, minute, we want to have the so the user doesn't want to, to to read a lot, but they should just but they need to to give some feedback to the system because they're using their wording, for example. They might might use use specific terms that are only available in their domain, um, and the system needs to learn about the meaning of, of those those attributes they they specify. So that's what uh, what we can't uh, do in general, or which we can't. But we, but we need the, the, the current user feedback uh, if we want to, to stay, uh, to have a generic approach working on, on text from, from many different domains. Okay. I have to wonder about this, so I'm asking a question now. Uh, 
No other questions online? Yes. Kindness. Please. Yeah, uh, very interesting. Thank you. I also have to ponder a bit more about this, but um, um, I'm not too much into the name entity tagging. How many different cases do you get there? Like, um, I imagine that even if you now afterwards do the matching also, you would need, um, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of different labels or for the named entity recognition. If, if we would use the name, the only the labels or the labels directly, we would need a lot more uh, uh, labels that are available. I mean, if we take Stanza, I think it's about 30 different labels. If you go for, for um, Cybert or whatever is as approach, they have even less. And there are some special trained models in, in bio biology, which we also tried, which only have one single label, so just this is an entity. Um, and of course, I can't say, okay, uh, match entity to this, this column, but I need to, to go below, uh, below the label level from the exact, so the label is one information we need. Um, the dimension itself is one information we need, uh, we use. The, the, the context, the sentence is one information we use, and um, also the position. And we could use, can use all of this to, to create a big vector representing each extraction and then match based on these big vectors containing this multiple information. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, I see. Because of all the thoughts, 30 categories to Yeah, thanks. Thank you. And Laura, okay. Please, Laura, go. Um, I was like thinking about your talk for a little bit, which is why I raised my hand so late. And I was wondering, why don't you just extract all that information from the documents during pre-processing, just create a full text indexing, and then run Boolean retrieval? Isn't that, wouldn't that end up being the same as what you're doing? Or can you maybe explain how that's different? Um, I mean, if you, if you look at the, the last slide, uh, if, if you remember the, the last slide where I said, okay, now I have to fill the table with the missing parts. Um, so, so I have to assume that, for example, there are multiple airlines in the incident report, um, and I need to find the, the right one, the, the maybe the one that is relevant, that the one that caused the crash or whatever, not others that were also mentioned in, in, in the approach. So we need to go beyond uh, um, getting getting everything that's that's relevant for for this attribute, for example, from uh, from a single text, but we need to find the one uh, relevant attribute. And that's why we using this, this matching approach. Sure, but like in, in any information retrieval approach, you always have the case where um, there are many terms in the document and only a few of them are search terms. So is it, isn't it just like search where the search terms are entities? Well, maybe I have to, to think about this. Yeah. Okay, sure, yeah. No, if you feel free to shoot me an email, maybe I maybe there's something I just didn't understand, and then I want to know that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, I think this last observation is something like really look into that because it looks like you are doing a lot of a job online, and maybe it's not needed. You can move it offline, and there are some also with schema creation. I mean, the schema that you use to me is not clear how you define that in a general case. I mean. It might be very, very heterogeneous uh, in terms of attributes. And it, yeah, okay. Uh, Just a short comment and then probably should. should have yeah, nice. Let, let's discuss this later. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the, the schema is really, it, it's really simple and based on, on, on the user experience. So if you have date, airline, and things, you have three columns and um, they contain. The values and then you can maybe run the average over one column with a need or two joints or whatever later. But um, so it's, it's a, the, the knowledge base I construct is it's really simple. It's just just some some tables in multiple times it's just one table that's maybe or maybe joined together with information that was already uh, stored. But it's uh, it, it's not about creating a knowledge base. It can be useful on its own, but it's really just about to answer the query that was just put. Yeah. Mark. Yeah, so you're assuming you have a predefined type of query somehow, because if you get a completely new query that on that data set, you can use the schema that you just defined for that specific type of 
query. Am if, I right? If, if no attribute is contained, that what I already expected, I have to, to uh, do this expansion process, attribute. which I have described, which is done on the per attribute uh, uh, base for new year. But if uh, I have another query which contains airline, but not aircraft, but a departure air force, then I just have to find the departure air force for the certain reports and can release the airline from that report, which is probably a scenario which happens when you do this exploration based on on the text, if you post the first query, then you need like, okay, now I need to, to get more information about that certain attribute, which I didn't consider before, but uh, I'm still interested in the things that it before. But yeah, there might be a step where you more or less start over where you just use the, the extractions you have satisfied, but not the, the knowledge base already. Okay. Uh, I have two suggestions just to let people, I guess, or at least me, understand better this work. The first thing is you might set up a use case very clear i mean this of the airplanes it works but i'm not really convinced about that so how you are going to use this in a real world scenario and the other thing that is always concerning me with these approaches for ir is if they are usable in the real world in terms of efficiency because it looks quite expensive I mean, in the online phase, but it looks, I yeah. mean, uh, it's the same concern I had before, actually. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.